So this little uh, bunch of plants right here in front is wild sarsaparilla, aka the root beer plant. This is the plant where today's uh, root beer drink basically originated from. For thousands of years, the native inhabitants used the root of this plant to make a uh, very strong flavored drink, and uh, hence the name root beer. So a very mature sarsaparilla plant, as seen here, will divide three times. So here's the main root stalk right here. Here's where it divides three times. And then again, at full maturity, dividing in anywhere from three to five separate leaflets here. These leaflets look almost identical to a uh, hickory leaf in some ways, although uh, it has fooled people into thinking it's some kind of a small sapling. Sarsaparilla leaves are very uh, fish shaped. They uh, are oblongated and then uh, reach their widest point about two-thirds of the way up coming to an outward tip. It's a very very finely serrated leaf and it's quite large. I've seen them as wide as uh, five centimeters, five to seven centimeters, and anywhere from seven to 12 centimeters long. I have a strong vein running up the middle, and then these veins branching out from the uh, center vein and steeply upward out to the tips of the serrations. Now, paying attention to the main useful part of this plant, this root you see here runs all the way underground into rhizomes, which are roots that other plants shoot up from. This uh, plant's main uh, method of reproduction is shooting up from rhizomes. They're very clustered, usually very close together, and they uh, spread out in a carpet on the forest floor. They like rich, moist, dense forest floors where there's uh, lots of deciduous trees. Although they don't mind conifer, which are needled trees. They prefer partial to full shade, nine out of 10 times. Rarely are they seen growing in open sun. I have uh, often seen them growing on a lake where the uh, sun is at its strongest on shore near the water but there's still always some kind of coverage. All we have here on this very mature sarsaparilla are its berries. Here's one here starting to turn uh, purple. And these berries are at full maturity in about mid-August. They are very, very deep purple to black. The main berry stalk coming out from the very bottom of the rhizome, shooting up totally separately from the uh, plant itself. This one here has three globes. I've not actually not seen one that had this many globes of berries. Usually one to two is more common like this one here. Right now they're at the green stage. They're past their flowering point. Before these berries appear, they have uh, Medium-sized flowers are similar to the size of the berries themselves, and they're about the same color as these berries now. They're about yellow-whitish to uh, greenish-whitish. In around there. Although when you see uh, a particular structure like this on this type of a plant, it's uh, pretty obvious it's sarsaparilla once you get all the identifying features down pat. So one of the easiest ways to tell this plant is uh, if you look down at the bottom, the rootstock is always sticking up out of the ground, revealing this rather thick, barky root. And then from there, it sticks up. This one's about an inch out of the ground. So it's a pretty obviously uh, prominent feature of this plant. And uh, a plant may not always have berries. It may be a sterile plant. This one's not in which case it'll just have the one uh, stem shooting up right to the main foliage here. This plant uh, is often pulled for the uh, root itself. 
used for drinks, teas, boiled down, mashed, often let to steep, and then uh, cold beverage, which is the original root beer. And that's most often why this plant is harvested. As far as food is concerned, the root is uh, considered an emergency food only. There's been reports of people getting very sick off the berries. I wouldn't consider them poisonous because uh, I've also read that uh, a lot of people actually use the berries to make and flavor their drinks. But um, again, I have personally enjoyed the roots of this plant. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's got a pungent flavor, uh, very root beerish in taste, although not sweet as compared to uh, the root beer you'd buy on the store today where it's mostly sugar. So here's the whole view of this plant pulled out of the ground. Um, there are a huge amount of these plants here and they do spread quite rapidly through the roots. I'm not worried about killing the patch. So here's a closer view of the root. It spreads along uh, meters and meters under the ground. This is a small part of it. Although the uh, first part here where I'm most focused in on was sticking out of the ground. The rest of this came from underground. And uh, this is generally the part people use. The whole plant itself usually reaches about a maximum height of uh, 70 centimeters. Here's a closer view of the berry cluster. The underside of the leaves, very strong vein, as per usual in most of these types of plants. Pale green. Rough texture compared to the top, which is a smoother texture. Whitish colored veins. And you can get a closer look at the uh, three times divided leaves. And then further dividing into uh, three to five leaflets at full maturity. When these plants start off, People can sometimes confuse them for poison ivy. However, telltale fe features of poison ivy refer to my uh, other video on poison ivy, and it will be quite evident the differences in these plants. So this next plant I'm going to cover on first appearance does not look like an umbellifer. However, it is a member of the carrot parsley family. This is called ground elder. This plant is seen here, uh, right now you're talking end of July, is reaching maturity. It's going to seed. Here's a seed umbel here. It's past its flowering stage and is dropping seeds. It's a very short, uh, stout plant. It's never usually more than a foot and a half to two feet tall at the most. It's quite a small plant compared to mem many other members of the carrot family. This plant has the ability to spread underground through its rhizomes and shoot up new plants. Hence why it's carpeted all along this garden site. So that being said, it is extremely invasive. Anywhere that there's exposed soil or a disturbed site, it will creep its roots and shoot up. And it will hog all the sunlight. So like most members in this species, the branches are alternating up the main stem. As you can see here, flower umbels are alternating off of this main stem. And we have the main flower head here, which uh, upon observation, has leaflets sticking out of where the uh, flowers continue to branch off. This plant is a perennial. It comes up every year and it's uh, very hardy. It can tolerate a lot of drought, a lot of abuse. Very hard to kill off. If you wanted to uh, eliminate this hedge here, you would have to dig down at least three feet and get every last piece of root because if you didn't, this whole hedge would re-establish itself and it'd be there again next year. This is the uh, wild version of this plant. It's just strictly green. There are other uh, versions available that I've seen that are uh, two, three colored, many different color combinations. So as you can see, the stems come out of the ground, these twisted mats. There are literally thousands of stems branching off into uh, a leaf pattern. 
and then some, the taller ones continue to uh, produce seeds. Here's a close-up view of the stem. <clears throat> the stem is uh, almost triangular in shape. It has one very, very flat side with sharp edges, and then the opposite side forms a rounded point. So you have three sides here. Here's the flat side, you can see in the video. So the stem is not round. Very pale green to a white color. It has a glossy sheen to it. A little bit of purplish tinge toward the base. And absolutely no hair. The leaves are divided twice. The stems aren't very big. They're only about three to five millimeters across. They're pretty small, even for uh, larger size plants. They're not hollow, unlike a lot of members of the carrot family. They're solid. They have a white pulp in the center of them. And these uh, plants, when they're very young in the spring, coming out of the ground, they're extremely nutritious. They can be eaten. They're uh, pretty tasteless, steam boiled anyway. They can even be, even be eaten raw, although I don't advise eating any wild plant raw unless you have to, because uh, bugs, parasites, worms, things in the dirt you don't want in your body live in these raw plants. So that's why it's always a good idea to cook them. But these plants can only be eaten when they're young, because if you eat a plant later on in the uh, season with flower heads, it becomes a very, very powerful laxative. That can be a medicinal effect if you're looking for that. But be warned, if you go foraging a pile of this stuff when it's mature, you will have problems. This plant was named uh, ground elder, despite having no relation to elders at all. The leaves are described as looking like elders, the tree. So the flower umbels are uh, white when they're in flower. There appears to be two seeds that divide on one seed pod. There are no leaves or feathers sticking out at the bottom of that umbel. And then there are uh, many umbels clustered in spaces. A very important key feature of this plant to remember is that the veins on this plant end at the tip of the notches in the leaves, not inside the notch like water hemlock. That's the only plant in the species of plant that ends inside the notches. That's how you identify water hemlock. I'd say uh, fine to medium serrated leaves, not super coarsely serrated, although they are lobed in some areas. And in some areas, it appears the one side of the leaf drops significantly down farther on the stem than the other side.